Hi, my name is Jason Short, and I wanted to take a few minutes here to go through the CLR proc sample that we're posting, uh, kind of as we're working on it. Uh, this is Visual Studio 2010, and I just loaded the sample solution. Um, in the My CLR proc export, there is a functions CS, and you'll see here that each one of these public static functions has a different SQL attribute on them. So there's SQL function, uh, here's another one that's SQL function, and here's one that's SQL procedure. Procedures and functions do have slightly different rules. I would recommend that you read through the vSQL4 file because I explain them. Um, I'm, we're also going to be covering it in the um, blog post as well. The real meat of the application, though, is these vSQL 4 files. The CLR proc sample runner doesn't do anything at this point. Eventually, it will actually run all of these and let you look at them. But for right now, we're just really going to use Data Builder. So I just hit Compile to compile everything. Um, and then I'm going to open up Windows Explorer to the CLR proc sample. This is the actual VistaDB4 database, but we don't want to use this one because we want to keep that one clean. So it makes a copy into the debug folder so that we can keep working from here. Load up Data Builder, and we're just going to load each one of these vSQL 4 files one at a time and run them. So right now if I go in here and look at the assemblies, there's nothing loaded. So the vSQL 4 files are in the CLR proc sample. And the first thing we want to do is actually add all of the assembly um, methods. So this is actually a pretty good SQL file in that it actually gives you a lot of feedback here. does a lot of structured exception handling, so it tries to create the assembly. This is the assembly name. There's a lot of comments in here. Please go through and read them. Um, and then this is the actual DLL. The DLL has to be present in the same directory as the database, uh, which you'll notice it is. This right here is the DLL, and it's going to basically bring that into the VistaDB4 database file and then you don't need it there anymore. Um, it'll also, if it already exists or if we get an error trying to add it, it'll go through and try to do an alter assembly which basically updates from the disk as well. Then it goes through and creates each one of the functions by basically seeing uh, from the database schema does this particular function already exist and if it doesn't then it'll go ahead and try to create it. So it creates each one of the functions. Um, once again, a lot of comments here. Uh, go through and read them. We explain why you need this full, the assembly name, export, namespace, then the procedure, which is a class, and then the actual function name. Um, here's another one that is a function. And finally, here's the one that's the procedure. So create procedure, get version procedure. Get version is there's two versions of the same basic method. One is a procedure and one is a function, so you can see the differences. So I'll, you can go through and basically select just a little piece of this at a time. And some people don't know this, but you can actually hit Control E or F5 and execute only that highlighted part. So basically, we can come down here and look and see uh, the example SQL functions. Okay, it added the assembly, but then it stopped because that's where we ended. But if we go ahead now and run the entire thing, we'll get a lot more. So because it was already in the assembly, now it updated it, and it added each one of these functions. Now if we go here to the programmability assemblies, we can see that assembly's been added. We extend it, look at CLR procs, and now here are the actual functions. So I have also have a trigger in there, but we're not currently using that as a part of this demo because that's a little bit more involved. But each one of the functions do not have to map to what you actually want to call them from SQL, and that's explained in the vSQL 4 files as well. So each one of these is currently there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open the call proc, and in here it actually goes through, make sure that everything is already registered, <clears throat> that it demonstrates how to call a function a couple different ways and how you might not want to do it, how to call it using variables, how to raise an error, uh, then it goes through and calls the get version as a function, 
and then the get version as a procedure and demonstrates the differences. So if you compile the default one that is up there and you run it, you'll notice that you get this just-in-time debugger window. If you choose the CLR proc example and hit yes, that will actually come into the CLR example right here at this debugger launch. This is actually a nice little handy way to debug CLR procs even though they're running within the engine. So you can actually call the system diagnostics debugger and say, hey, if we're not attached, launch, and if we are attached, break. And that way you'll always get your breakpoints here and then you can step through the code and actually see exactly what's going on even though it's being hosted by Data Builder. So this is a nice little useful tip. Um, if you don't want that to happen, just comment it out or compile it in release mode. So now we're going to keep hitting it. And here are the results down here at the bottom. And then you can go through and run the removal script also if you want. Um, but that's the basics of the sample. Um, take a look and give us some feedback on the forums. Thanks.